Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about five cards to pick up in actual order, starting with my favorite card and then going to my least favorite, but still a top five. These cards at rotation should be very easy to pick up and trade. Uh, it's kind of like the guy who forgot rotations coming and now they need to trade into a new standard deck. And once rotation comes, they know the value is very low, but the value is already low because everyone knows it's coming. So I don't mind picking up number one and two right now. And then three, four, and five you can pick up later. There is obviously a pattern. Uh, very few cards after rotation will go up in price. There's just a handful of them, and this one is obvious. I'm kind of trying to do the obvious ones and then kind of explaining the rationale so you can apply it to your own speculations. It actually is not beneficial for everyone to speculate on the same card. I'm currently speculating on a Philia, not the Philia, ah, not the Philia you think I'm speculating on, but the other one, the two and a white Aldrich Moon one. And it doesn't benefit me at all if, uh, let's say, a thousand people start buying them because then my buy-in is much higher every time I load the website. Um, I don't want that to happen. I would much rather have, okay, this is a speculation. I like it because XYZ. Let's try to buy, buy as many copies as I can at point uh, A. So rotation is happening. Uh, that means cards will get really easy to trade for, and they will get in incredibly cheap. This is my number one pick. I want to start here. You never know what land is going to be the best. I always tell the RTR story. During RTR, before RTR, the most expensive land was Hollowed Fountain. So before the shock lands were reprinted, the blue-white shock land was by far the most expensive. Now, during RTR, the best deck was Slesnia. Slesnia, the Temple Garden, the white-green, was about $15 at the time. The is it one, the blue red one was only five dollars. Then modern took off. So is it was never a great, it was never a great deck in standard, but modern there was a deck called Splinter Twin, and yes, it wanted copies of the blue the steam vents. So all of a sudden the steam went, the steam vents went up in price, and the Temple Gardens went down in price. Check up Steam Vents in Temple Garden today. You'd be shocked at which one is more expensive. Pun intended. So, uh, back to this one. It is under $2 like and crashing. This one will be under $1 eventually. At $1, you cannot lose. Has Boros ever been very good in Standard? No. Has it ever been very good in Modern? No. Has it ever been very good in Legacy? No. But all it takes is one splinter twin deck, and all of a sudden, things change. And I would much rather buy this at under one than, as you will see, the blue-red one is the most expensive. I don't like its current price point, but I do feel like it will drop by 50%. I think all these lands are going to drop by 50%, and there will be a time period 60 days after rotation when they hit their bottom. Now, not, they're not going to hit the bottom at the same time, but that's generally where uh, you can get them at the cheapest price. But I'm starting to pick up these two right now. Concealed Courtyard, Black White, I mean Tokens, Abzin, I don't know, like, it could be, I like this card a lot, but only because it's cheap. And it is a fast land. Fast lands are expensive. The ones that, uh, when you look at the fast lands from... Meriden, what was it? It wasn't Meriden. Meriden, second time. Scars of Meriden, that's the one. They did very well. Black Cleave Cliffs was, and it still is, a quite expensive card. Barring the reprint that is coming. And Sea Chrome Coast. These cards are legit because in modern, no one is going to really play the long game. You want to play something that turn. You want to have flexibility. And this is very good. White, black is interesting because you have Thoughtseize in this. And one of the downfalls of Thoughtseize 
is if your opponent is playing red, you're in kind of in trouble because shock land one, maybe let's say you fetch into a shock into a Dossies. You just lightning axe yourself without your opponent doing anything. So I think this is an interesting alternative. You do get your dot C's down, but you're not giving up uh, a bunch of life to do so. And against the wrong deck, five damage, I mean, that's game. Okay, Botanical Sanctum. Uh, this is an interesting one. It is, in my opinion, the most beautiful one of them. But here I'm going to draw the line. Concealed Courtyard. Well, I mean, if Botanical Sanctum goes under $3, I guess it would also be a good buy. You want to accumulate at least a playset of these, but if you want to speculate, I would say 8, 12. I get these in playsets because that's how they're going to trade, and you can get maximal value by offering ease. So if I'm a trader, I don't want to go to four different people to do four different deals to get four botanical sanctums. I want to go to one person, even if I pay a little bit more, that's I'm fine with it because I have all four copies. Now, if I was trying to do four deals, it's not it's not guaranteed I'll be able to get four copies from four different people. Harder to do. I like these cards in modern. I think that they are being poo-pooed because the set was overprinted and it was not that good, which creates an opportunity to buy. So right now it's different. It used to be you could buy, let's say, a few fetch lands and they would go up. You buy a place that you buy eight rainforest misties and you keep them four of them for yourself and then you sell the other four when star city games spikes it at 100. here you have to do more volume this is a volume play this is not a misty rainforest that can go to 100 dollars. this is a card at its best day is a 10 dollar card now blooming mars uh, it is the one that sees the most play modern due to jund However, I don't like its price tag at five. I would much rather have two or even three copies of the other ones I shown you at. Shown you at. It's super late. My gosh, I butchered the English language. But back to this card. I like it. However, the color patterns are never ever guaranteed, especially when they're enemy colors. Uh, typically, blue is where you want to be. However, that's not always true. I mean, I've seen. I mean, I've seen Temple Garden be the best shock land in Standard. That's crazy to me, right? Like Temple Garden was the cheapest shock land before reprints, and suddenly it becomes the most expensive. So, depend and you know, with modern bands or this new card or this new spicy deck, you never know. So, I always buy the cheapest land in my opinion, unless it's. I absolute guarantee like the misty rainforest you know that has blue in it and it fetches for stuff that has blue which means you can play it in legacy all right so let's talk about the last one i would definitely stay away from the last one right now it is around six dollars and then we'll wrap it up with the foils i love this card at one or two dollars but six dollars it is just not um it is blue and red so blue red is typically a stronger enemy color in modern obviously the best version of it being splinter twin which has since been banned however it does have cantrips it does have lightning bolt i mean it has a lot of stuff you want to play fast and that's the beauty of these lands that i mean they are the enemy fast fast lands so depending on the colors what can you do then i like red lightning bolt is in red I like black. Inquisition of Kozlak, Dot Seas, um, Fatal Puss, that's all in black. And it's very, very important to have a Dot Seas turn one, just like it is to have Lightning Bow up turn one. Now, what about the foils, you ask? I do like the foils. However, they have to go down way in price. So, the regular cards, they should go down about 50% at the low peak. The foils, they're probably going to go down about 30%, maybe. I mean, people will want them in EDH just because they're enemy lands. I would not be unhappy to get a few hundred copies of each of these in non-foil. Uh, foils, I would recommend 
maybe get it for your ed deck or maybe a playset, but they're not worth speculating on. Foils are very difficult to move. I live in Houston. It is very humid. These foils are not going to survive. The card quality is not high enough. But uh, a few hundred copies of, let's say, Inspiring Vantage at $1.25, $1.50 is what my target is. That's doable. I mean, it's at $1.25 right now. And I, I mean, spending, what, $100 on it to get 100 cards? If it goes up to five, you're good because you can trade out. So the beauty of th this is you trade them in fours. That's a very important concept to remember. It's the same concept that I use for, what's that, Underworld Connection, where I bought the card at eight cents. It became two ninety nine, but because it was a four of, I could trade four of them into your shock land. That was worth $10. And you can repeat this infinite amount of times at your local game store not at a Walmart. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.